Welcome back to Reliving the War, the show where we go back in time to compare episodes of WWF Raw and WCW Nitro. We've reached the 5th of February, WCW have their Super Brawl 6 pay-per-view coming up later in the week, while we are two weeks away from the WWF's In Your House 6 show. The Raw broadcast this week features tape matches from Stockton, California, while Monday Nitro is live from Lakeland, Florida. Let's get stuck in as we relive yet another Monday Night TV ratings battle. Yokozuna and Davy Boy Smith are already in the ring over on Raw, getting ready for their tag team match against the two dudes with attitudes. Vince McMahon lets us know that our main event tonight will be a Royal Rumble rematch, Bret Hart vs The Undertaker. Eric Bischoff and company begin Nitro by promoting the Super Brawl show, while letting us know that Hulk Hogan is in the building. Remember the Hulkster got poked in the eye last week with Elizabeth's high heel shoe. And we'll also see Sting and Lex Luger taking on the Road Warriors in our main event. Our first matches then are Kemp Cornette versus the Two Dudes with Attitudes over on Raw and the Macho Man Randy Savage defends the WCW title against Chris Benoit on Monday Nitro. The Four Horsemen's Chris Benoit makes his way down to the ring all on his own while the Macho Man is flanked by Miss Elizabeth and Woman. The audience in attendance are already going crazy here as the match gets underway, a pumped up crowd tonight for Monday Nitro. Benoit and Savage have an intense lock up to start the match off, pushing and shoving each other into each corner as neither man is able to get the upper hand. The Canadian Crippler manages to get the best of the Macho Man on the outside of the ring, allowing Benoit to begin building offense when the match gets back inside. Savage takes an impactful clothesline before suffering through a series of knife edge chops. Benoit is firmly in control here at the beginning of this match. Strikes and headbutts are followed by a snap suplex as Woman and Miss Elizabeth look on with concern. After delivering a body slam, Chris Benoit goes to the top rope and delivers a flying headbutt. Savage really is taking an absolute beating here. Benoit goes for a pin attempt after delivering a side suplex. Savage kicks out only to get knocked down once again. It's getting to a point here where the WCW champion looks absolutely incompetent against a relative newcomer to WCW and I'm not so sure about how this match has been laid out so far. Savage manages to throw Benoit out of the ring but once again Benoit gets gets the upper hand by ramming the macho man into the ring post. Back inside the ropes, Woman gets on the apron and this allows Benoit to launch Savage over the top rope. Benoit then goes for a dive through the middle ropes and man, Benoit's head smacks the ground and it looks absolutely brutal. Here, let me play it back for you with sound. What? He didn't see it because oh! Oh! The missed dive allows Randy Savage to roll Benoit into the ring and deliver the elbow drop, but Ric Flair shows up on the outside. Flair grabs Miss Elizabeth and uses her as a shield against Savage, but then Woman attacks the Macho Man from behind, allowing Arn Anderson and Flair to do a number on the Macho Man as the ref calls for the bell. Woman has joined forces with Ric Flair, the horseman attacks Savage and guess who comes in for the save? Yep, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan swings a chair as the horsemen retreat. The match is over and yeah, I'm not so sure about this one. It would have been nice to see Savage get a little bit more offense in, but the WCW champion came out of this one looking pretty bad between Benoit completely out wrestling the Macho Man and Woman also turning her back on the madness. Over on Raw, HBK and Diesel make their entrance as the fans go crazy. Remember, last week Yokozuna had a bit of trouble with Jim Cornette and Owen Hart, so it'll be interesting to see how that's worked into this match. A game of rock, paper, scissors determines that Shawn Michaels will start things off for the babyfaces while Davy Boy Smith starts things off for Camp Cornette. We have a pose down after the opening bell, Sean obviously gets the cheers. The two lock up and immediately HBK is sent out of the ring after a big shoulder block 
from the Bulldog. Sean takes his time getting back into the ring. We get a sequence where Davy Boy blocks a hip toss attempt and Sean gets lifted up in the air. Sean rakes Davy's eyes and sends him towards the ropes. Davy holds onto the rope only for Sean to deliver a clothesline, sending the Bulldog to the outside. Yokozuna gets into the ring but some unique double team offense leads to Yokozuna getting sent back to the outside. And after both teams catch their breath, Big Daddy Cool Diesel and Yokozuna are both tagged in. Diesel throws punches at Yokozuna but Yoko manages to pull off a Samoan drop. Yoko tries to follow up with an elbow drop but Diesel moves out of the way. HBK gets tagged in but Kem Cornette get the upper hand when Davey pulls down the bottom rope causing Sean to go over the top. Davey Boy brings the fight to HBK on the outside before getting tagged back into the match. A huge vertical suplex from the Bulldog brings a chorus of boos to the arena. The heels begin using dirty tactics as we go to commercial break and when we come back Yokozuna is destroying the heartbreak kid as Diesel looks on. Davey gets tagged back in and a big knee strike sends Shawn Michaels flying across the ring. The Bulldog does a little showboating as the Heartbreak Kid desperately needs to make a tag. Yokozuna comes back in, Shawn tries to fight back and an opening comes when the big man misses a giant splash. Diesel wants tagged in, the audience are cheering for Michaels to make it to his corner. Shawn steps over Yokozuna to make the tag. Diesel shows a lack of fire with some slow forearm strikes and punches the Yokozuna Ozuna, but he's still getting the job done, even taking out Davy Boy Smith when the Bulldog tries to run in for the save. Diesel tags Sean back in after delivering a big boot. Sean climbs on Diesel's shoulders to bring a huge splash to Yokozuna. Davy Boy accidentally hits a leg drop on Yokozuna when trying to break up the count, and this allows HBK to hit sweet chin music on the big man. Yokozuna falls out of the ring. Owen Hart comes down to try and get Yoko back inside, but it's no good. Diesel and Sean win the match via countout. After the match, Jim Cornette rips into Yokozuna, verbally destroying him in the ring and blaming Yoko for losing this match. The big man snaps, he attacks Cornette, and this leads to Owen and the Bulldog going after Yokozuna. Yokozuna goes to fight back, and the Bulldog and Owen quickly dash out of the ring. So Yokozuna has now left Camp Cornette it seems, and he's now going to be booked as a babyface. Monday Night Raw gets the first point. I enjoyed this tag team match way more than the WCW title match on Nitro. You may have noticed too over these past few weeks that both WCW and the WWF were putting on some big matches to kick off their shows. Both companies were trying to hook viewers in with their opening 15 minutes or so. Hulk Hogan's going to cut a promo on Nitro while the World Wrestling Federation presents another match, Hakushi vs the 123 Kid. We've saw this match before on Reliving the War, so let's see if Kid and Hakushi can do better this time. The Kid comes to the ring holding an oversized baby's bottle. Jerry Lawler tells us that the Kid will prove Razor Ramon is a crybaby at In Your House. Hakushi and the Kid start things off with no one getting the upper hand. Hakushi pulls off a unique reversal that gets him out of a head scissors, a a shoulder block and leapfrog sequence ends with the kid taking a sidekick that sends him outside of the ring. The commentators are using this match to build the Razor vs Kid match, not much of the action is being called here. The kid takes a break on the outside, when the match resumes Hakushi is once again able to outsmart his opponent but the kid jumps right back up and we're seemingly back to square one. Hakushi is sent over the top rope, kid hits a senton and back inside the ring the kid brings a series of kicks in the corner followed by a running dropkick. When we come back from commercial break, the kid is now in control. Kid goes to the top rope but Hakushi delivers a dropkick in midair that stops the kid in his tracks. The audience finally made a little noise for this spot right here and it did look quite good. Hakushi delivers his cartwheel back elbow followed by a flying forearm smash. Kid finds himself outside of the ring and this gives Hakushi a chance to deliver a springboard splash to the outside. Hakushi then hits his diving shoulder block back back inside the ring but the kid kicks out. A spinning heel kick lets the 1-2-3 kid shift momentum for a little while but he can't capitalize for long. Hakushi hits a Frankensteiner before going to the top rope, kid hits a drop kick and then the 1-2-3 kid hits a double underhook suplex from the top rope to score the pinfall win. Not a bad match at all. 
The Hulkster has a few things to say over on WCW Nitro. As Randy Savage gets taken out of the ring, Miss Elizabeth joins the Hulkster inside the ring for an interview spot. The Hulkster says that this is all Ric Flair's fault. If the horseman didn't come down to the ring and if woman didn't turn her back on Macho, then Savage wouldn't need to be assisted out of the ring. In the middle of the promo, Ric Flair shows up and the Nature Boy blindsides the Hulkster. The Nature Boy goes on to attack Hogan's eye by scratching and clawing at the Hulkster and as Flair delivers a series of punches, the Giant and the Zodiac come down to the ring. The Giant nails Hogan with a steel chair, but once again, the Zodiac stops the Giant from doing any further damage. Randy Savage hits the ring with a steel chair, and after cleaning house, Savage tells Mean Gene that he can't say on television what he's going to do at Super Brawl to Ric Flair. Savage then shouts at Elizabeth, asking why the First Lady of Wrestling didn't warn Hogan of Ric Flair's presence, and the segment comes to an end as Hogan is seen bleeding and Eric Bischoff asks for paramedics. It's another point for Raw. While it's refreshing seeing the heels get the upper hand on Nitro, Hakushi and the Kid put on a good match that was just more entertaining. Before our next segment kicks off on Nitro, we see an advertisement for the WCW magazine. Some kid can't be asked doing his homework, so a WCW magazine appears from nowhere. The Kid then turns into the Stinger, and then the Kid morphs back only to keep Sting's face paint and gear on. A little weird but still good stuff. Over on Raw, we have some updates on Gorilla Monsoon, including an interview with the man himself while WCW presents a match, Hugh Morris and Kevin Sullivan versus Arn Anderson and Brian Pullman. Jim Cornette and Clarence Mason tell us that they haven't heard anything about their legal complaints last week. Remember, Clarence said that Vader acted in self-defense when he beat the shit out of Gorilla Monsoon and therefore, Vader shouldn't be suspended. Clarence says that Kemp Cornette will sue the WWF immediately if they don't get the result they want. We go over to Gorilla Monsoon and Gorilla tells us that his injuries will heal over time. Monsoon apologises to the WWF fans for lashing out at Vader, but Gorilla says that he was provoked by the Mastodon. Apparently Vader said a few nasty things that the cameras didn't pick up. Gorilla refuses to apologise to Vader though, and Gorilla says that the reinstatement of Vader is all up to the board of directors, not the WWF president. Speaking of the WWF president, Jerry Lawler asks Gorilla what was he thinking when appointing Roddy Piper as a new president. Gorilla thinks the Hot Rod will do a good job and Monsoon will come back after Wrestlemania to resume his duties. That's it really, not much else going on. Over on Nitro we have a Dungeon of Doom vs 4 Horsemen tag team match. Bran Pullman and Hugh Morris start things off. Bran Pullman delivers some chops as Hugh Morris laughs. Morris hits a big overhead slam on both Pullman and Anderson as Eric Bischoff tells us that Pillman vs Sullivan at Super Brawl will be a respect match. You have to make your opponent say I respect you in order to win the bout and also the competitors will be wearing straps. Kevin Sullivan and Brian Pillman see a very little amount of ring time but when they're inside the squared circle it's all very weird. Neither man bumps for the other. Pillman and Sullivan hit each other but nobody sells and then both men tag out, a precursor for what was going to happen at Super Super Brawl 6. Morris and Anderson come into the ring and we see that signature double A spine buster. Pullman comes back in and Hugh Morris is getting worked over in the horseman's corner. A quick tag sees the enforcer back inside the ropes and a reverse chin lock is applied. Hugh Morris fights his way out but Bran Pullman and Arn Anderson continue with the quick tags. Morris is being completely dominated here by the horseman. Pillman takes control of Morris for a moment before Kevin Sullivan gets tagged back in. And then things just completely break down. No joke, Sullivan and Pillman beat the shit out of each other. You can see some live rounds getting thrown in again. Pillman no sells Sullivan's offense. This was all a work by the way, but it's done so well and it's all very convincing. Arn Anderson seemingly has to bring Sullivan away from the ring to stop the two men fighting. But Arn gets hit with a broom at the entranceway when Double A tries to hit a pile driver. Seriously, this broom just appears 
ears and it bops double A on the back of the head. It looks like Paul Orndorff may be the attacker. Sullivan goes back to the ring where Pullman is being held down by Morse. Sullivan whips Pullman's back a few times before Pullman just says nope and rolls out of the ring. The match is awarded to the horseman and Pullman walks away looking seriously pissed off. This was the most interesting thing the Taskmaster had done in a very long time. An easy point for WCW Nitro. Ric Flair takes on Marcus Bagwell on Nitro next while Bret the Hitman Hart defends his WWF Championship against The Undertaker. This WWF title match stems from Diesel's interference during the Taker vs Hart match at the Royal Rumble. Bret promised he would give Taker a rematch and well here we are. The Undertaker stalks Bret around the ring as Bret looks for an opening. Taker misses two strikes in the corner but Bret is unable to capitalise. Taker takes out the Hitman but Bret is able to fight back. A headbutt from the Hitman leaves Bret dazed and the Undertaker uses this to take advantage for a little while. Undertaker takes Brett from corner to corner, choking out the Hitman before flooring Brett and wrapping his giant hand across Brett's face. Big Daddy Cool Diesel then makes an appearance as the Undertaker goes for old school. Taker is distracted by Diesel and this allows Brett to throw the dead man off the top rope. Diesel goes on commentary as Brett goes on the attack. The Hitman brings Taker to the mat before applying a leg lock. Brett's trying to soften up the dead man for the sharpshooter. Brett continues to work over the leg, methodically using the ring to his advantage in order to weaken the phenom. Taker fights back with some of those uppercut strikes and we go to commercial break as Diesel looks on from the commentary desk. Taker is now limping around the ring as the hitman is thrown to the outside. Brett gets smashed into the guardrail and this gives the phenom a little time to recover. Back inside the ring the undertaker chokes Brett with his foot before once again going for old school. Taker is able to hit it this time and then the undertaker delivers his signature jumping clothesline. Undertaker scoops Brett up for the tombstone pile driver but the referee gets knocked out in the process. Brad is able to push Taker into the turnbuckle before rolling Taker up for a pinfall attempt, but the referee is still knocked out. The match continues then without a referee. Brett again goes after the leg as Paul Bear tries to wake up the official. Diesel jumps up from the commentary desk and Brett gets wiped out when the hitman was attacking the Undertaker on the outside. The Undertaker then goes after Diesel and it looks like Diesel has been taken out, but then Big Daddy Cool grabs a steel chair and he smashes Taker across the back before bringing the Phenom into the ring for a jackknife powerbomb. The Undertaker tries to sit up but he can't do it. Diesel delivers another jackknife as Big Daddy Cool gets booed by the audience, the same audience that was cheering him earlier on. We go to commercial break and when we come back we see footage of Bret Hart attacking Diesel during the break and then we see the ring and both Bret Hart and Taker are gone. The match is ruled as a no contest. It's a bad finish for sure, seeing the dead man take those jackknives looked really impressive but the ending felt very empty. As you can probably tell the WWF were all about protecting Bret and Taker during the run up to WrestleMania 12. Marcus Bagwell vs Ric Flair sounds like an odd matchup but let's see what happens. The nature boy comes to the ring with woman. Woman is now an associate of the horseman. Paul Orndorff shows up and he goes to the commentary desk saying the funny thing about payback is you never know when it's going to happen. So let's get this straight. Paul Orndorff took a spike pile driver on concrete and his idea of payback is hitting someone with a broom. Yeah, nice going Mr. Wonderful. Slick Rick starts things off in control after fixing his beach blonde hair. Flair delivers the chops and punches in the corner but Bagwell fires back after delivering a back body drop. Buff Daddy sends the nature boy over the top rope and a fast running clothesline finds its mark. Back inside the ring, the nature boy gets a bit of breathing room by using the referee to his advantage. Chops and punches are shared in the corner before Bagwell once again fires up, delivering punch after punch before hitting a second back body drop. The commentary team are surprised at how well Marcus is doing here and so am I. Flair's giving a lot to Bagwell here and it looks like the nature boy may be in trouble. Bagwell hits a drop kick but a second one is missed when Flair holds onto the ropes. Flair goes for the figure four but Bagwell reverses with a cradle. The nature boy kicks out at two. A bit of miscommunication maybe leads to this strange looking bump where Marcus falls out of the ring. Woman distracts the referee while Flair attacks on the outside. Flair delivers his big 
big knee drop inside the ropes. Bagwell again goes for the same spot where he brings a series of quick punches to the Nature Boy, but Flair shuts it down. Slick Rick then goes to the top rope, he takes the bump as usual, but Bagwell can't score the pinfall win. Buff hits a body slam before going for a splash from the apron, but Flair gets his knees up. Rick struts over to Bagwell and the figure four is applied. Marcus submits, but Flair won't let go of the hold. The ref tries to break it up, but Rick pushes him away. Randy Savage then comes down, Rick Flair runs away, and our match is over. I'm going with Raw here for this one. Flair vs Bagwell was okay, but Marcus went for the same spots on more than one occasion, and that weird bump he took looked a little comical. Brett vs Taker didn't end all that well, but I liked how Brett put all his focus on Taker's leg during the majority of the match. Just better storytelling, really. WWF Raw ends things this week with another Billionaire Ted skit, while WCW gives us Lex Luger and Sting vs The Road Warriors. Vince McMahon says, despite legal action from Turner Broadcasting System, the Billionaire Ted skit will air as scheduled. This one continues on from last week. Remember, we're at a press conference where Ted is getting scrutinised for his business practices against the WWF. A member of the press asks if WCW has lost money even though the whole operation is funded by stock holders. Ted says that's true but at least he's having fun. Ted says that WCW is his plaything, it's his toy. The next question is yet another attack on Ted Turner's business practices. Ted is questioned about the Time Warner merger. The member of the press asks Ted if he will treat Time Warner's shareholders the same way he has treated his own stockholders and will Ted continue to waste their money? Ted says he will. You can see the angle the WWF were going with here. They were trying to reach those who had invested in TBS by saying Ted Turner was throwing their money away by funding WCW. And WCW Nitro in itself was nothing more than Ted's little plaything that was created to hurt Vince McMahon and steal away potential viewers from the World Wrestling Federation. The media asked Ted what is it that drives him and Ted says money and power. After the skit ends, a newspaper advertisement that the WWF legitimately tried to take out is displayed on the screen. Vince McMahon says that the advertisement was rejected by the New York Times and Wall Street Journal. Vince says that a modified version, however, will be printed in the New York Times. Again, the advertisement goes after TBS shareholders. Very soon, the USA Network would be telling Vince to stop producing these segments, and it's kinda easy to see why. This is how Raw went off the air this week. Flexi Lexi and the man called Sting vs the Road Warriors The audience are firmly behind Hawk and Animal here, again we have a loud LOD chant as the competitors get ready in the ring. The Stinger and Animal start things off, Sting goes for a wrist lock right away but Animal pushes the Stinger to the mat. Sting has to collect himself a little before trying again. Sting gets a headlock applied but Animal reverses with a front suplex. It's all for nothing though, Sting is able to get back to his feet and deliver a face crusher followed by a clothesline from the top rope. Luger and Hawk are then tagged in, Lex is able to hit a pile driver and just like last week, Hawk jumps right back up and delivers a shoulder block. Bobby Heenan tells us to never turn our backs on the Legion of Doom and that's sound advice. Sting is back in the match and Hawk takes control momentarily, Sting finds an opening and we see the Stinger splash, but Animal breaks things up when Sting goes for the death lock. With Animal now inside the ropes, Sting again gets overpowered, but Lex Luger pulls the top rope down after Animal gets Irish whipped. Luger tags in and Sting isn't pleased with Luger's tactics here. The Stinger wants a clean match, but Lex Luger is more than happy to take shortcuts. Luger begins working over Animal, delivering a body slam followed by multiple elbow drops. The power in the arena then goes completely out for a moment. The feed gets cut off momentarily, but we're back in business seconds later. I just want to point out that I really dislike how the WWE Network puts these messages on the screen whenever things like this happen. It's more distracting than the bad footage it's trying to explain, but anyway. Sting is now bringing the fight to Animal. Hawk tries to tag in, but Lex and Sting are working well together with quick tags. Luger delivers a picture perfect power slam, but Animal answers with a side suplex. The match then breaks down when Animal goes for the pin. Sting runs in to break things up, and this leads to Hawk rushing the Stinger and sending him to the outside. Animal no sells a suplex while Sting and Hawk fight outside the ring. A big power slam from Animal follows, and then Jimmy Hart jumps on the 
apron holding what's described as a large lead plate. Animal goes to attack Jimmy Hart and this gives Luger a chance to pick up the plate. Luger smashes Animal's back and Luger and Sting get the win. The audience is booing, Lex is celebrating but Sting isn't happy. Mean Gene interviews Hawk and Animal immediately after the bout. Road Warrior Hawk demands a match against the winners of the WCW title match at Super Brawl. Animal says that the Road Warriors will stop at nothing to get their hands on Luger and Sting at the pay-per-view. So we have ourselves another match then for Super Brawl. Whoever wins the Harlem Heat vs Sting and Luger match will face the Road Warriors later on the show. The Nitro broadcast ends with the commentary team running through the matches coming up at Super Brawl 6 and the final point goes to WCW Nitro. The WWF scored the first point with their opening tag team match and the WWF secured the second point with the Hakushi vs 123 Kid matchup. The Horseman vs Dungeon of Doom earned WCW Nitro the next point and afterwards the WWF got another point for the Hart vs Undertaker match. WCW scored the final point with the Road Warriors vs Sting and Luger match and so WWF Raw wins this week's episode of Reliving the War. Our overall scores are now 7 points to Raw, 11 points for Nitro and we've had three ties. Nitro pulled in a 2.9 rating while Raw managed a 2.7, meaning WCW got the ratings victory this week. So we'll need to make a little change next week because Raw was preempted for the Westminster Dog Show. Because we have the Super Brawl results, the In Your House 6 results and the February 12th episode of Nitro to cover, next week's episode won't have a Raw vs Nitro scoring system. We'll instead use next week's show to go over the pay-per-view results and we'll also take an in-depth look at the unopposed episode of Nitro. The following week we will look at the February 19th Raw vs Nitro TV battle. It's either that or a 50 minute video next week and I'm not sure I could finish that on time. So I hope you guys understand and I hope to see you all next week. Thanks for watching.